Hey, I'm here with my good friend Don Crowther. Don came out to the HQ. We've actually been shooting a product, shooting video for a product in the last couple of days. And it, it's crazy because we figured this out. 2003, we actually created a product together. And uh, here we are creating product number two 16 years later. So welcome, Don. It's pretty Thank crazy. you. And so I, while we were shooting, I'm like, I did a little Insta story about that. And I said, hey, if you got any questions, a little ask me anything. So we got a few questions in. So I thought we'd jump into, the, into these. So we had a couple that were about paid traffic. And you've done a lot of paid traffic. Um, and let's see, what's the most challenging part for you when it comes to running paid advertising? And then a similar one was, how has paid ad traffic changed over the years in your opinion? Okay, so, so to me the key is that you've got to get an offer that converts. So let's say for example that you're getting $10 in sales per person who registers for a webinar. If you can increase your conversion on that and get it up to $30 in sales, now all of a sudden you've got all kinds of freedom in paid advertising to do stuff you never could before. Now you can spend $15, $17 to get somebody onto it and still be very profitable in this, in this equation. And so that's, to me, the core of success in paid advertising is nailing an offer. Yeah, and you had talked about like, you know, the, the inventory, at least for Google and Facebook, there's a limited inventory and right. there's more people competing for the inventory. So in essence, really you're not competing for the ad, but you're competing for the conversion. Because if someone else can out-convert you, they can outspend you, and vice versa. If you can out-convert someone else for your offer. That is, that is totally right. And, and as long as we take stupidity out of the equation, because there might be somebody who's willing to pay a whole lot more for a short period of time, but they're eventually going to stop running those ads because they just can't afford to do it. And so you just got to get your your offer and your conversion high enough and then you can afford to run paid ads. Yep. Okay, here's another couple of questions I'm gonna to group together. Over all those years, how many times have you had major pivots in your business? And the other one, similar question, what changes have you had during your journey? <laughs> so I've, I've clearly had more than you've had. <laughs> so <laughs> mine originally started off, I was creating websites for people and uh, after a few years of do doing that, they started teaching HTML in high school and so now everyone had a son or son-in-law or something like that that could do it for 500 bucks. That became unprofitable. And so then I moved into the traffic business. In the traffic business, Google ads were just starting to come into existence. There was nothing out there on how to do them. I sat down and wrote a book, which I got printed down at Kinko's and sold them for $197 a copy. $600,000 later, I suddenly am in the business of helping people build their business online. And that became my major pivot in my business is that I actually started helping people build their business online and developed a number of courses over time. I've had minor pivots, different products, staffing, those kinds of things. But those are my main pivot to my mm -hmm. business. I had one very, very big pivot. So I started in 1996 teaching about the stock market. And I did that until 2005. And then I had a messy partnership breakup where basically I had a partner who stole the business from me. And I did, you, you remember that. Oh, well. I remember that. That was it not was, pretty. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was some heartache at that point. And, but that's when I pivoted to teaching product launch formula, uh, or well, teaching marketing. And that was product launch formula. And that was 2005, I've been teaching product launch formula. Since then, it's, it's gone pretty well. Uh, of course, it's, say so. <laughs> it's been many, many evolutions in that process in that time, you know, went from a physical product, CDs and books and DVDs to an online product, started doing live events, a mastermind coaching, um, started doing video. Uh, there was no video in the first two PLFs and, and on and on and on. Built a team. We're up to like 30 people now. So many evolutions, but one great big pivot along the way. And I'd say that you did it, nailed that one. It, it's, <laughs> it's gone pretty well, gone pretty well. So um, here's one from, from Kathy Hay. Uh, how do we fight the fear of seeming less relevant than the kids coming up behind us? And there's another one, I'm gonna bunch this together. How, when we're starting out, how do we build authority? So there's a reason in my mind why I'm putting those two together. But yeah, I, so, the, we actually did some math yesterday, and together we have 48 years of experience in online business, which is sort of nuts. You'd be hard-pressed to find two other people that could sit down together 
in 40 years. So, how, so this idea of, of staying relevant with people come up behind you, or start if you're just on the flip side, starting out, where do you get the authority from? Okay, so let me just answer Kathy's question directly about how do you fight the fear? Well, I don't think you should be afraid of it at all. Uh, the people, there are some who are gonna be a flash in the pan and they'll be gone a year from now. You shouldn't be afraid of those. The people who come on and they have a real viable offer, eventually you're gonna end up partnering with them in doing joint venture promotions or maybe doing a product with them or all kinds of different things. And so you shouldn't be afraid of them. I remember you saying this years and years ago, you saying you don't, you don't consider that there's competition, it's just there's, there's future partners out there. Right, and there's partners who haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I would say like, especially for both of these, for, um, you know, there, I, I think about it, like a lot of people get in this business, they're trying to become like influencers, they're trying to get a lot of followers, they're trying to get a lot of likes, get a whole bunch of people on, follow them on Instagram. And I think of that like, or, or get a whole bunch of views on YouTube and they're, they're counting the wrong metrics for mm -hmm. one. Yep. And it's like rolling the dice. The, the, the thing is, is, there are, you, you could become an influencer. You can get a bunch of followers and then you gotta figure out a business. But at the end of the day, if you're doing that or you're trying to create viral videos or funny videos, you're rolling the dice. You might become successful, you might not. Or you could maybe go try to play a search game on Google and again, you're rolling the dice. It's out of your control. But if you can find a market and learn how to serve them and learn what they need and give it to them and go beyond, you know, a lot of people say, you know, the, build value, deliver value, and they'll come. Well, create a great offer and they'll come. And that's sort of coming back to where we started with the traffic is like, if you create a great offer that helps people, that serves people, and that converts, then now you've got some control because you can go out and get joint venture tra traffic. You can find affiliates, um, you can use paid traffic, so. And you also end up over time, building your own audience that you can serve, and so you're not as at risk of someone else coming to the marketplace because right. you've got a group of people who admire you and want you to buy. With exactly. You. So if you've built a tribe, and, and it could be it could be partially on social, but it's certainly a big part on email, and you've built that by converting people from from strangers to clients, and you've been paid to do that because you have an offer that converts. Well now you've got this following and you become the 800 pound gorilla and all of a sudden it's like you can you control the, the traffic you control mm -hmm. the flow you control the deals yep there you go well said yep so wherever you're watching this scroll down leave a comment if you got another question for us go ahead and leave that and let's go get in this week